super proud of how far these guys have come. When you think that you've done all that you can, do more. Want to watch football without the restrictions of blackouts or cable? Check out expressvpn.com to help you get access to all the live games. Sign up today using the link in the description to get three free months. Yo, the Bolt fam, it's the director. Chargers fans, we finally got some news. We finally got some juicy news as the Chargers 2023 season finally is showing signs of hope, especially, man, at a position we just had to get right, the offensive coordinator. Breaking news, the Chargers have just hired brand new offensive coordinator Kellen Moore to the team. And I'll be honest with you guys, when I first heard that the Chargers were interviewing this guy, I was like, okay, you know, the Cowboys boys offense they've been pretty good is this really the guy that we need though well you know what i did my homework and upon doing my homework i'm going to tell you guys right now this was a slam dunk spoiler alert to the rest of the video but i really really like this hiring and it's one that i think the chargers have absolutely nailed in terms of what we need to do to improve as a team getting a young mind in there to mesh with brandon staley as well as having the actual experience calling plays that we needed as an organization i think this could translate to one of the most fun uh chargers offenses to watch in a long time so we're gonna go through and dissect everything and in terms of my thoughts of kellen moore his impact on on the team in 2023 and why i think in my humble director opinion that chargers fans should be pretty dang stoked dude because i think this is going to be a very very successful hiring for the chargers before we do get started guys shout out to the sponsor underdog fantasy we just got what the super bowl maybe the pro bowl if they decide to do that coming up i know they're doing that a little bit different in the nfl this season but as far as uh, nfl football one of our last opportunities here i'm going to be going in big for the super bowl definitely want to root against those chiefs i guess fly eagles fly for the next couple of weeks either way if you guys want to get in on the action that way use code director to match your first deposit up to 100 dollars. and remember there's a ton of other sports that we can enjoy during the off season maybe i'll take a crack at the nba baseball etc etc now before we do get started guys hit us up with a like and sub if you do enjoy this chargers content small amount of time you guys take to hit the like sub and bell notification helps me out a lot let's get into this kellen moore business lights camera action Some breaking news out of the NFL where the Cowboys and offensive coordinator Kellen Moore have mutually agreed to part ways. This was a talented offense and they were productive, so it's a bit mind boggling. The Chargers have just hired offensive coordinator Kellen Moore uh, during this. I'm here to tell you guys why you should be excited about this. I sure as heck am excited about it. I'm so excited. I'm starting to stumble over my words and get ahead of myself. But let's just jump right into the first topic here. Familiar but proven. We're going to get you guys a little look inside of what to expect from Kellen Moore on the Chargers with Justin Herbert and this offense in particular. And I got to tell you, man, it's going to be good. So familiar but proven. Now, the first thing that I kind of ran through my mind is well, I think a lot of Chargers fans had this same opinion is that I don't know how much Kellen Moore moves the needle in terms of the Shanahan offense, the McVay tree offense. And in all honesty, it, it doesn't really do that. But instead, what it's going to be doing is featuring an offense that's kind of familiar to the Chargers. The Cowboys have ran, what, a West Coast offense the last three years, predominantly a passing offense as well. But you know what? I feel like it's a lot more balanced than that. We'll get into that in just a second. Uh, just a second. Now, this is very keen to what the Chargers are already familiar with right we'll just say touches of the lombardi foundation that's been laid down but trust me when i say this is vastly different more creative it's a proven success it's a very important difference to identify early when it comes to kellen moore okay and honestly they're not gonna keep anything of the lombardi system that wasn't working that chargers fans are ripping their head or uh, ripping their their hair out of their heads for last season they're going to take what maybe was working and then heavily implement this kellen moore system that's been so successful with the cowboys for many seasons now you know what as a matter of fact in Moore's last four seasons with the Cowboys as offensive coordinator he has posted the second best offense in the entire league 
just behind guess who the kansas city chiefs if you guys haven't checked out this website this is awesome this really helps me out in terms of my homework in doing uh, research for these videos stat muse right here and this is again black and white or i guess multicolored uh statistics right here here are your top performing offenses in the last four seasons there's your kansas city chiefs followed by the dallas Cowboys, man. If you guys want to dig just a little bit deeper into that, let's actually make this a, a tad big, be, a bit bigger right here. The cow or the Chiefs at 2,600 yards, just very closely followed behind by the Dallas Cowboys. Touchdowns at 225 for the Chiefs, very followed closely behind by the Dallas Cowboys at 210. And the list goes on and on. Now, of course, how that translates to wins, well, the Cowboys are going to be the Cowboys, but at the same time, in terms of offensive production, this boost is going to be dramatic. And of course, you do see the Chargers already right here, but a lot of this has to do to translations for Justin Herbert in particular. Because if you take a look at a lot of the other statistics in terms of Justin Herbert, uh, red zone scoring, et cetera, et cetera, it was really, really bad for the Chargers the last several seasons. As a matter of fact, you'll just see down here 182 touchdowns resulting in the number four offense. So there's a lot of work to be done, but just already off the bat, the second best offense in the league over the past four seasons, I'll definitely take that we then get into a little bit more of the nitty-gritty here in 2019 this team posted uh the sixth best offense in the league followed in 2020 by the 17th best offense and this was in a Dak Prescott injured season I think he only played a handful of games that year then you follow that up in 2021 with the first offense in the league the number one offense in the league and then this season the fourth best offense in the league so you know what I'm seeing here I'm seeing some consistency I'm seeing things that work a system that's being implemented that actually does something okay and it, it kind of begs the question you know why why did the dallas cowboys move on from this guy i guess i'll talk a little bit more about that here in just a minute but it felt like he was this lamb to the slaughter right he's somebody had to be sacrificed to the nfl gods in order to appease the cowboys fans who lost during the 49ers in that uh, playoff game i think it was one that the chargers are going to benefit from now this offense really is the real deal and kellen moore's resume is far more proven than any other candidate that we've covered so far. If a lot of you guys are wondering, well, director, you know, why didn't we talk about this guy before? Well, it's because he wasn't available. He wasn't on the radar of a lot of Chargers fans because they were still in the playoffs. The Chargers, what they're doing different in terms of Kellen Moore as they've done in previous hirings, that they're known for poaching, let's say, unknown guys, quarterbacks, coach, unknown young talent, hoping to strike some gold. And you know what? We end up missing a lot. And in Moore's case, He's already a proven play caller, both on paper and on the field. The statistics follow this guy's name. The results follow this guy's name. He's probably the leader of one of the best offenses in football for the past, what, four seasons now. And it is proven, the second best in the NFL. Now, some of you may be worried that we've taken on another Lombardi because again, there's, there's flashes in the pan in terms of similarities here. But this offense, be it familiar, is, is one I assure you guys to celebrate as Chargers fans because, again, it is vastly different in terms of creativity and execution. Vastly different. And the Cowboys have been one of the most lethal teams in moving the football, let's say even vertically the last four years, which is something the Chargers are trying to implement. But an important staple as well to the Kellen Moore system that I sure do appreciate is that Moore is very good at establishing the run you guys have heard me talk about this before the chargers not a very good run team these last several seasons that's about to change under kellen moore and i do think it begins with what he does in the past and this has turned into one of the most i would say as a result of all these things one of the most slam dunk hirings that i've seen as a chargers fan in a long time again at first i wasn't quite sure then did my homework and i was like my goodness dudes my my socks have been completely blown off this is a young proven experienced offensive coordinator whose results do speak for themselves and honestly guys with this i i wouldn't be surprised if more pushes herbert to a career season in 2023 so let's start dissecting exactly what makes this system exciting and unique for me and does differ away from the lombardi system that's uh, made us dread watching the chargers offense this last year this first segment's called a mismatch nightmare and this is something that honestly dudes you, you you take a step back and you think about it a little bit more you're like holy crap why haven't we not been running this the entire time now diving deeper into more as a play caller and a strategist i would have to say he's very very good at utilizing his personnel what was one of the biggest things that we hated watching the chargers play this season it was like why do we not so have so and so out there why are we not going for the obvious one yard with the qb snake why are all these obvious things as us as fans are seeing out there on the field not being executed on game day 
Well, that's something you're going to see a bit different with Kellen Moore, especially when it comes to the players he's got out there on the field. One of the staples of the Cowboys offense this last year was identifying and attacking mismatch opportunities. And what I mean by that is, well, let's say you got a guy like uh, Mike Williams, who's six foot four, being covered by a five foot ten DB. Well, I think if you toss that thing up, he's going to have a very good chance at bodying that dude and coming down with the catch. That's the kind of opportunities that Kellen Moore is looking for. And it was something that was very successful with the Cowboys. Behind star studded receivers like uh, Lamb and Gallup and even Amari Cooper back in the day, the Cowboys were able to push the ball downfield despite whatever the defense was doing. It's kind of defense proof. You're looking for those mismatch opportunities because it doesn't matter if they're in zone, if they're in man. You target that guy with one of your stud receivers that has the advantage. More often than not, you're going to result in something successful. And this is because Moore was excellent at positioning his star talent in the right place at the right time. Now, the Chargers, when we're talking about translating that over to the Bolts, they possess more than enough talent to make this happen as well. We got what? Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Josh Palmer. This team can isolate pretty much whoever they want in terms of what the defense is showing us. I would actually suspect in terms of uh, identifying mismatches, Mike Williams is going to benefit vastly from this move as he's already one of the deadliest wide receivers in the NFL when it comes to contested catches. So this is something to keep in mind. Kellen Moore is very good at identifying this and having the guts to attack it. And that's just one element of Moore's game. The next thing I did want to highlight is called finding a balance, okay? By running a ton of spread and vertical concepts, like we discussed here in just a second, Moore has been known to force his opponents into a more aggressive coverage look, right? Cover four probably being the most common. This, in my opinion, is where Moore unleashes his most underrated traits. An aggressive running attack complemented by short throws, okay? This is how he keeps drives moving. This is how he generates momentum. This is where more vastly differs from Joe Lombardi. The creativity and how more attacks the, the flats and the underneath is one much more successful and two much better timed, right? There's a lot of the times we're seeing him run a screen, run a swing, you know, an end around. It just didn't make sense. Like, what? We got one or two yards to convert. Why are we doing this nonsense? No, very well timed. And it has a purpose, right? That's not the point of those plays if you're going to be a uh, Kellen Moore. The point of those plays is to open up the run. And if the Cowboys have done anything right in these last four seasons, it's creating space for a balanced offense. Sure, I would maybe consider their offense more of a West Coast, you know, gunslinging type of offense. But in the end, this is a very balanced offense because the space created by Moore's fluent passing attack system this has blasted the doors wide open for guys like Zeke and Tony Pollard most recently who's been a superstar especially in fantasy football matter of fact the Cowboys have ranked as the seventh best running team in the NFL over the last four seasons can you believe that with how good they've been at passing the football pushing the ball downfield they've also been one of the most deadly running uh, running systems in the league as well which tells me it's very very balanced and I think this is largely due in part to Moore's success in getting the defense to back off, right? As soon as you catch him in a certain look, Moore's like, you know, I'm going to take what the defense has given me. We're seeing, you know, a, a differential in linemen. We're going to go ahead and pound that rock. And I feel like it's something that, again, not a lot of offense corners, certainly for the Chargers, take advantage of too often. It's something that it feels obvious to us as fans watching at home, but not something you see practiced often enough. Now, the Chargers... I feel like they've been interviewing a slew of uh, potential offensive coordinators with the hopes of improving their run game, right? That's been a big emphasis this offseason. They've interviewed guys like Luke Steckel and Thomas Brown, but landing more was definitely significant because what you're getting there is a premier passing attack. Do not get this wrong. His passing attack is absolutely incredible, uh, but it's also designed specifically to open up the run. It's absolutely genius. Because you need that run. You need that balance. And I think Moore's offense, as healthy as it's been, has proven that that balance is worth pursuing. So in the end, I think the Chargers, they're going to land a guy that keeps their foundation as a passing team. They're going to keep that strong while also boosting their run game, let's say, tenfold. And there's a lot that goes into boosting that run game other than just saying, hey, their pass game is really, uh, really effective. Let's go ahead and throw more DBs out there. No, that's probably just the first layer for me. The second layer here is called a well-oiled O-line. Now, the Cowboys, if you've been an NFL fan for many years now, you would know that they've been known for 
a great offensive line for years now, right? They've been known for their excellent in block or their excellence in blocking for years. And sure, it's not their best O-line of all time. We're not talking what was it like 2012, 2014 Cowboys, but this is still solid as hell, right? The Cowboys feature, let's say in terms of blocking, a ton of zone blocking for the running backs using concepts that are both genius on paper and on the field. And this is something the Chargers, I would say we're wanting to implement when maybe targeting the Shanahan system just a little bit. Because at this point, it feels like, if you've been watching the Cowboys, it feels like Zeke or Pollard always has a couple of options to choose from in terms of holes to run through. And that's definitely a problem you want to have as a running back. And this is because, honestly, of play design. Short and simple. This is because of your OC. Moore's lines have always been well-tuned in terms of blocking and, and uh, uh, generating space for the running back. And the same can be found, let's say, in the passing game as well. Just because the run game has been great in zone blocking doesn't mean the passing has been left behind. No, it's been very good. And this has resulted in Dak Prescott being one of the best to push the ball downfield. His average depth of target is somewhere averaging over the last four seasons 8.9 yards per attempt, which is absolutely insane, actually over the last three seasons. Herbert's last season remained a mere 6.9 in terms of depth of target, largely due to Lombardi's inability to design anything past 10 yards. It was very frustrating. So an improvement in terms of your offensive line, the blocking, the, 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 the creating space for your running game, this is something that's, again, going to boost the Chargers in areas that they desperately needed it. Speaking of protecting your quarterback, this next segment's called He Protects His Quarterbacks. <laughs> Plain and simple. Whether it be Dak Prescott or what was it, Cooper Rush, right? There's a lot of people praising Cooper Rush in his time quarterbacking for the uh, Cowboys while Dak Prescott was hurt. That's how good this system was, where the backup was absolutely performing so well. That's because this system is certainly designed to help your quarterback out. Now let's get more into the specifics of protecting your quarterback. Kellen Moore is fantastic at recognizing when it's time to throw it in, in an extra blocker or two. We got Tara the Mod out there. I hope you're watching. This is something that she was preaching to the heavens. Why in the world are we throwing Justin Herbert there, out there without any additional protection? It resulted in what we saw, I think, a couple of days ago in terms of the news. Justin Herbert had been playing through, what, a, uh, uh, a rib injury as well as a shoulder injury that he just got surgery for. That's not something that needs to happen. What needs to happen is your offensive coordinator needs to go out there and realize when it's time to throw in an extra guy to protect your quarterback. This resulted for Kellen Moore uh, protecting Dak Prescott quite well. Prescott ended the season with just 20 sacks on the year. Be it only playing in 12 games, I understand that. But when you grab his on-pace stat, which was he was on pace for 28 sacks in the season, that still ranks well below the bottom half of the league. In contrast, if you guys want to know, uh, Justin Herbert in the 17 games, he was sacked almost 40 times. The protection was just not there. And it was especially not there when it was pretty evident he needed a little bit of extra help out there. And this was very frustrating to watch if you were a Chargers fan. Lombardi would hurl Justin Herbert into the fire every single time, expecting him to scramble around and figure it out. No, in this scheme, it's more about giving your quarterback ample time to find an open target or even a mismatch like we talked about. This is a prime example of featuring your player's strengths, right? Giving Herbert more time. Guys like Williams, Parham, these guys can shine to their best traits. But this also opens up, let's say, even more opportunity for Herbert to take off on the ground. I know we don't want to see our quarterback turn into a Jalen Hurts or a, Lamar, or a Lamar Jackson, but this is more like the Patrick Mahomes or Dak Prescott effect where you can extend plays and make yourself a threat on the ground. That ad added element sprinkled in does wonders for your offense, and a lot of this has to do to Kellen Moore's commitment to protecting his quarterback. Speaking about that quarterback, this next segment's called Let Herbert Cook. This was one of the most important hirings you could have made to improve and protect and strengthen your quarterback position, which features one of the best in the league to do so right now. And this impresses me maybe the most when it comes to more strategy. This is going to be his rhythm, right? It, what it feels like the Cowboys are always doing is looking to generate momentum, right? And if you guys watch my videos, that's one of the biggest things I say is underrated. Momentum is king. I don't care what sport you're playing. I don't care what league you're playing in. Momentum is something worth protecting. And maybe it goes overlooked sometimes. That rhythm is important. 
He always starts the game by giving his quarterback, let's say, easier throws, right? Let's get in the groove a little bit. Let's attack the flats. Let's open up the receivers a little bit. But what he does from there is what impresses me the most, right? Anybody can do that. We saw Lombardi maybe do that a couple of times. What he does after that is evolve. He evolves. He digivolves. He pokey, Pokemon evolves. He takes it to the next level. As the defense starts to show its cards, Moore always finds ways to attack you deep. Always. Maybe it takes a little bit of time, but he's gathering that rhythm. And it's a rhythm that can be found in almost every single Cowboys game this year. Screens, maybe scrimmage plays, are almost always reserved to generate momentum. Not feature as an identity like we saw with Joe Lombardi. Now, once your quarterback is on beat, right, the momentum is starting to snowball a little bit. The defense has maybe been identified. Moore gets to work on punishing defensive tendencies. And again, it's very obvious when you watch Cowboys games. This then leads to more aggressive coverage looks by the defense, which more attacks with well-designed and timed runs. And then from there, it feels like rinse and repeat. This is a great way to get your quarterback cooking. Herbert was tossed to the wolves way too many times over the last couple of seasons, right? It felt like he was expected to figure it out. That's not how it's supposed to work, Joe. <laughs> your OC is the one who's supposed to figure it out. And Herbert now with the freedom to maybe step back and actually do his job without that lingering handicap can finally get cooking behind some very intelligent and well play or well designed plays that are designed to make his life a little bit easier. So I like that a lot, man. Let Herbert cook. He will be the center focus of this offense. And, and Kellen Moore's job is to make his job just a little bit easier. I like that a lot. The last segment I wanted to cover in today's video is one that's extremely important. It's one that I feel is maybe the most important in terms of targeting Kellen Moore specifically. Now, this segment's called Red Zone and Second Half Magic. If you're a Chargers fan, you know this almost biblically at this point. The Chargers struggled heavily in two categories this year that ultimately led to their demise, in my opinion. As most of you will remember, our second half performances this season were absolutely pitiful, horrible. This was definitely a contributing factor to our loss to the Jags in the wild card. The Chargers was such a huge lead. They couldn't protect it. They couldn't score in the second half. And it'll go down as maybe one of the most embarrassing losses in Chargers history, which Chargers fans are going to have to carry for the next 365 days. That sucks. Kellen Moore says, I think a little bit differently. Over the past four seasons, the Cowboys have finished as the fourth, the 19th, the fourth again, and the first team in the NFL when it comes to second half scoring. Okay, that outlier of the 19th, that was when Dak was injured. I think he only played four or five games. That already screams huge upside to me. You know what it tells me? It tells me that Moore is one of the best in the NFL when it comes to second half adjustments. You know who wasn't one of the best in the second half adjustments? Uh, possibly a guy named Joe. Possibly a guy last name Lombardi. It was pretty bad out there, man. And again, it came to our detriment in the end. And this was probably Lombardi's biggest weakness in his time with the Chargers. He just could not adjust. It was the same thing over and over and over again. Maybe we find some momentum in one or two quarters, but for maybe half the game, we take off because we don't know what to do. There's no adjustments. Kelmore's already a proven adjuster, in my opinion. Then you've got the scoring situation, right? The Chargers have been a bottom of the half team in this stat over the last, or in three of their last four seasons. Red zone touchdowns. This is where the Cowboys have been magical the last few years, right? Ranking six in 2021 and first in the NFL in 2022. If you're a Chargers fan, you've seen this over and over. The Chargers have been the staple of driving downfield, resulting in no points. Sometimes it's as a result of a Brandon Staley fourth down conversion that doesn't quite work out, but it's because we can't score. We're in the red zone. It's really difficult for this team for one reason or another. That could change big time under Moore, right? Again, 6-21-21 and, and first in the NFL in 2022 when it comes to red zone touchdowns. Now, what's even more mind-boggling is that the Cowboys have finished first in both red zone scoring and second half scoring in this last season in 2022. Why in the world did the Cowboys let this man go? For the Chargers, this is a prime example of going worst to first in terms of our OC position. Their biggest weakness just added the best possible man for the job to address this team's needs. So in terms of the 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 Kellen Moore system, the Kellen Moore efficiency, the Kellen Moore, you know, uh, uh, let's say resume. I think it's almost as good as it gets right here. We're gonna close this video out with that. Some of these some of these last thoughts right here. Okay, Moore 
was missed by a lot of us in terms of, let's say, creators, content creators, uh, news writers, et cetera, et cetera, because he just wasn't available. This wasn't really a guy on our radar. The Cowboys were pushing further into the postseason. Maybe a lot of us did not mention this guy, but as soon as he became available, the Chargers pounced on more to get him on the squad. And that was for good reason. This could be maybe the best hiring that the Chargers have made in a long time. Maybe in, even in my time as a Chargers fan. The experience behind this dude is insane. And this was at a position that the Chargers just had to get right. The offense needs to get right. Sure, this, the jury is still out on Brandon Staley in terms of the defense. I, for one, think there's reason to believe that his defense has already turned a corner and should be a big thing next season, but that's a video for another day. But they lack so much, let's say, experience and creativity on offense. It became very hard to watch as Chargers fans. So trust me when I say this, guys. Kellen Moore, he's going to change that big time. I have no idea, again, why the Cowboys let him go. It felt like, again, he was a lamb to the slaughter as a sacrifice to the NFL gods to help the Rods next season. There was really no rhyme or reason as to why they let him go. And I'm not the only one who thinks that. I, again, I've been doing a lot of research since the news dropped. I've been watching a lot of, you know, NFL programming and stuff like that on the topic. And everybody's just as puzzled by the decision as I am. But in the end, it's one that greatly benefits the Chargers and more specifically Justin Herbert. Best move the Chargers could have possibly made at OC. Gone are the days of Lombardi. We are ushering in the era of Kellen Moore, and it's going to be an exceptionally fun one to watch for Chargers fans. Mark my bolted words. Kellen Moore is going to create a system that's extremely, extremely satisfying to watch for Chargers fans, waiting for this offense behind Justin Herbert to explode. Well, you guys in the comment section below, let me know what you're thinking. Let me know your thoughts on Kellen Moore, what, he, what his biggest effect is going to be in terms of the offense next season. Maybe a player you're most excited to see implemented in this system for Kellen Moore. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining me. This has been the direct Make sure once again to hit up Underdog Fantasy. Use code DIRECTOR to match your first deposit up to $100. Get in on the action, certainly for the Super Bowl. Should be a very good time. As well as let me know your thoughts on the whole Kellen Moore situation. Have so much fun out there, guys. We'll be back soon with another video. This has been the Director, and as always, bolt up and stay frosty. Trust me, guys. Things are just getting started in terms of the Chargers finding an identity on offense.